Okay, so welcome to this next video in the theorem of probability. So we're going to continue on uh, with our discussion of the convolution of two general gamma distributions. Okay, so so far we have that the PDF of the convolution of two independent gamma distributions, x and y, as a function of little t, is equal to lambda to the power of t times a plus b e to the negative lambda t over t times the constant 1 over gamma of a, gamma of b. So you have set a and b long ago when you told me what these uh, what these gamma distributions are. You set a and b. So those are just constants. You can plug them into the gamma function and work it out in principle. Uh, and then times the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the power of a minus 1, 1 minus u to the power of b minus 1, du. Again, as far as this problem is concerned, as far as t is concerned, this function is a variable in t. Uh, t, remember, is any positive number. It's the values that this convolution can, uh, random variable can take on. Uh, it is not a variable in here. This is just a constant. You'll integrate this out and you'll get some function of a and b, and that will just be a constant set by the values of a and b that you chose long ago. So this basically is just a constant. So let me just write that out as a constant. Okay, so now what we get is that the PDF is just some constant times lambda t to the power of a plus b e to the negative lambda of t divided by t. And also, this is guaranteed to be a PDF because the convolution is going to be a PDF and the way we constructed it, it was guaranteed basically to integrate to 1. So this constant is going to be whatever you need to integrate this to 1. Now basically, if I just recall what the, um, what the, um, what the, dis what the PDF for a general gamma distribution on the positive real numbers is, so if I have t, which is distributed gamma, and to make it unconfusing, let's use the uh, letters alpha and beta rather than a and lambda, which we've used already in this problem. Okay, uh, so this is going to be 1 over gamma evaluated at alpha times, um, times, uh, well, oh, sorry, no, that's, let me just write out. The probability density function evaluated as a function of little t is going to be uh, 1 over gamma of alpha, and this is on the positive real numbers, of course it's zero on the negative or non-positive real numbers, uh, times uh, beta t to the power of alpha e to the negative beta of t divided by t. Now this thing out the front is just a constant, it's something that makes this integrate to 1, okay? Apart from that, this looks extremely like this. Basically I'm letting lambda take the place of beta, so there we have beta uh, where else do we have lambda? Lambda here and beta here. That looks awfully good. And we're letting a plus b, this va which is just some number, you add a and b together. a and b are just some positive real numbers now. You add them together, you get another positive real number. And we're letting a plus b take the, va the, take the place of alpha here. Okay? Uh, so, and again, obviously the t is perfectly positioned as well. That's fine. So this is a gamma distribution. Basically, x plus y is going to be gamma distributed. And it's going to be gamma distributed uh, with... Uh, because this is just a constant, so all what, what we're next going to do is say, okay, that implies that this constant must equal this. Uh, but basically, we've done everything now. Ignore the constant is just whatever need you needed to integrate to make this integrate to one. Um, so uh, this is a gamma distribution. There's no ifs, no buts. Uh, it has all the portions of a gamma distribution, and the constant is just whatever was needed to integrate to one, and it is therefore going to equal this constant because this is what is needed to make this bit integrate to one. On, and this bit is identical to this bit, okay? Right, uh, so x plus y is indeed going to be gamma distributed a plus b and parameter lambda. So there's the proof that the convolution of two gamma distributions is still gamma with uh, param parameter a plus b lambda, even if a and b are not integral values. And a good intuition for why that is, a good way of remembering it, is the example for integral values where it's very, very intuitive that that is the case. Okay, uh, right, now what we say is, okay, 
if this is gamma distributed, then this constant must integrate, uh, must be what we need to integrate to 1. But we know what the constant needed to make the gamma distribution integrate to 1 is. That k must equal 1 over gamma of alpha. And what is alpha in this case? It's a plus b, so it must equal 1 over gamma of a plus b. Therefore, this great big thing up here must equal 1 over gamma of a plus b. So now let's get rid of that and move this up. Okay, uh, so uh, let's do that then. Let's set this thing here equal to 1 over gamma of a plus b. So 1 over gamma of a plus b. So we have now proven uh, that the convolution of a gamma of two gamma, of two independent gamma ran random variables distributed gamma a lambda and gamma b lambda is going to be gamma distributed with parameter a plus b lambda. Okay, now what we're going to do is use this fact here to find the normalizing constant for the uh, general beta distribution. So basically, 1 over gamma of A plus B must equal 1 over gamma of A times gamma of B, okay, times the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the power of A minus 1, 1 minus u to the power of B minus 1, du. Now let me just remind you of how uh, beta distributions, what the PDF for a beta distribution is. So if I have a distribution t, which is beta distributed, and let's say uh, with parameters, again, we'll use alpha and beta, then the PDF uh, evaluated that some value little t is going to be equal to some normalizing constant, which is what it took to make the thing, e uh, to make the thing integrate to zero, times x to the power of alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x to the power of beta minus 1. And again, alpha and beta can take on any positive real numbers. Okay, uh, that was what it was on the interval 0 to 1. So when we integrate that on the interval 0 to 1, it has to equal 1. So basically the integral from of c times x, sorry, alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x to the beta minus 1 dx between 0 and 1 has to equal 1, because remember the PDF is 0 everywhere else, so it's equal to that if uh, x is an element of the interval 0 to 1, and it's 0 otherwise, so 0 otherwise. So basically, if we integrate the whole PDF from negative infinity to infinity, it's 0 on all of the real numbers except on the interval 0 to 1, where it's going to be this. So the integral basically just becomes the integral from 0 to 1 of the PDF on the interval 0 to 1. And that, therefore, has to integrate to be 1, uh, just by uh, basic definitions of uh, probability density functions. Okay, so let's pull out... Um, this, uh, well, we can pull out the normalizing constant there, and basically this integral looks extremely like this integral up here. Okay, uh, so uh, basically, um, let's, um, if we um, if we set alpha, basically if alpha is equal to a, and beta is equal to b, then these are exactly the same, basically. So our a and b are two numbers, again, which are greater than or equal to zero. So this is a beta distribution here. And all that's remaining is what's the normalizing constant. Where's the normalizing constant? Well, the normalizing constant, therefore, must be made out of this stuff. So if I multiply both sides of this equation here by gamma of a plus b, so basically what I'm doing is multiplying both sides by gamma of a plus b, so I'm multiplying this side by gamma of a plus b, I get 1. I'm multiplying this side by gamma of a plus b, and I get gamma of a plus b over gamma of a times gamma of b times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of a minus 1, 1, sorry, u it should be, u to the power of a minus 1, times 1 minus u to the power of b minus 1, du. And don't worry that, okay, I've used x down here and used u up there. That's just a dummy variable. I could change this to u and I could change this to x, whichever one you want to do. It's just a dummy variable. The point is that this looks awfully like this. Look at these two things. They're in perfect correspondence, basically. Um, this one into times this thing, this integral times this in is equal to 1, this integral times this is equal to 1, but these two integrals, this integral here is exactly the same value as this integral here, if you just set alpha and beta equal to 1. Therefore, this must be the normalizing constant, basically. So the normalizing constant of a beta distribution must be ta gamma a plus b over gamma of a, gamma of b basically, is what that shows us. So, if you have some random variable t, which is beta distributed with parameter 
A and B, then the PDF of that beta distribution on the interval 0 to 1 is equal to gamma of A plus B divided by gamma evaluated at A, gamma evaluated at B times x, sorry, t to the power of a minus 1 times 1 minus t to the power of b minus 1. That is your PDF now. We have the normalizing constant in all cases. That works for all a and b that are positive real numbers, basically. So from our inquiry into the convolution of the gamma distribution, amazingly, it spits us out what the normalizing constant for the general beta distribution is.